Sports Shop Hour. Proudly sponsored by Titan. everyone happy St. Patrick's Day and a warm welcome to Cheltenham for the fourth and final day of this year's festival what a roller coaster ride we've enjoyed over the first three days and this afternoon we build to a crescendo with the quest for jump racing's holy grail the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup Facing the Cheltenham Hill, but with a big lead, driven out, relentless, remorseless, has pounded his cargo star into submission. The answer is Denman. Denman won the Gold Cup. Corto Star has cantered into the lead. One last fence to go. He sometimes makes a mistake, but not today. This is the champion. Corto Star will clear of Denman. The first horse to regain the Gold Cup. Corto Star canters home. And Aputov is cutting Manella Indo back. And Aputov is storming up the hill. Six, seven legs clear in the hands of Rachel Blackmore. She won the champion hurdle on Tuesday, the Grand National last year. And now it's the Gold Cup. Aputov, a runaway winner. Well, I really hope that's whetted your appetite for what lies ahead here in the fourth and final day of this year's Cheltenham Festival, the Beatles Cheltenham Gold Cup, topping the bill on another fantastic seven race car. Joining me this morning, I'm delighted to say, for Mark Yacarda, Dan Barber, and Jonathan Neeson. Guys, how are we holding up so far? Are we excited by what lies ahead? Jonathan? Always excited by the Friday, Gary. Um, the it Fox Hunters. It means we can go home afterwards. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Gold Cup and Fox Hunters, and uh, yeah, a really good supporting car. Mm. And Dan, just tell us how you're feeling after three days down. Is the best still to come, do you think? Yeah, more bill away than wing leader at the moment. <laughs> Several mistakes en route. But try to finish strongly. Mm. Not quite as strongly like you're as back the in PA. Track. Just, yeah, yeah. I, I am feeling re-energised. And how can you not be when you see a Gold Cup like that with a, a potential star? A horse who we know is a star if he can bounce back to his best of, of last year in a Plutard. And several other horses who are either sort of archetypal Gold Cup staying types or those with a bit of class who have, maybe have stamina to prove. We'll have a closer look at the Gold Cup obviously in a few minutes' time. Jonathan, do you think overall it's a strong race this year? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because virtually everything that you could have hoped would turn up has turned up, and that's pretty unusual. OK, we will delve deeper into the feature event in due course, as I say. We had a great day here yesterday on the third afternoon. Pick out some of the highlights. Dan, I suppose, Envoy Hélène in the Ryanair. What a boost that was for the Aplutar team and a big, big win in its own right. Yeah, definitely. A, a, a race of... It shows you what can go wrong in Cheltenham races as well. For Envoy Alan, it was just plain sailing throughout, always in the right place, didn't really put a foot wrong, travelled so powerfully, and then behind him you see the big gun Shishkin, who I'm not sure he did anything right throughout the race. It started badly. Nico was saying even at the start he was feeling like he was curling up on him, and he was hanging, ploughed through a fence, and still had enough about him to finish second. So a case of what might have been for him, I've heard Ruby and, with, with Lydia on the road to Shelton Rap, later in the day suggesting that headgear might be a way forward but actually the highlight for me was one of the handicaps how good time Johnny won from there after what happened and when you see the margins involved from the second to about the 12th 
hey, A, how did he win? B, how did he win by that far in a race where I don't even think the others were stopping? That was that was a sensational handicap performance from him, I thought. And Jonathan, the stayers hurdle, I mean, that was built up as a clash of several new kids on the block, and in the end, one of the old stages came up with a good side of Berlin. Not many saw that coming, did you? Uh, no, I didn't. The uh, Racing Post Spotlight did, and they're not surprisingly taking a lot of credit for that. Um, quite right, too. It wasn't a great renewal, was it? It's tremendous that he managed to win it again, but it was a pretty moderate um, renewal of the race, I think. And uh, I felt quite sorry for Dashiell Drasher that A, that he didn't win, and B, that he then got demoted up <laughs> yeah, as well. Because he's, he, I mean, he's, he's a fantastically consistent and very nearly top class dual purpose horse. I mean, he's a very good chaser as well. I haven't delved into this, but I wonder if that's Jewish inquiry denied us the biggest price forecast in a championship race, certainly that I can recall. It would have been 40s beat the 33s. About five minutes before the race, Dasher Drasher was shown at 80s on the show. And it's one thing he's still reeling from the fact that Dasher Drasher might win it, and then the one who inherits the lead is at the side of Burley, who's the third biggest rag in the field. Just a remarkable race. And Dan, anything else to pick the bones out of in the other races set and won the plate? We saw you wear it well up there all the way to take the Mayor's Novice and Angel Stone in the Kim Muir. Yeah, I like you wear it well. It's been a pretty good week for Mayors, hasn't it? We've seen Mascada winning the, the Grand Annual and obviously as the Mayor's race, the Mayor is going to win it, but you mentioned Angel Stone as well, another Mayor who, who cantered through the Kim Muir, but I think you wear it well has got a lot to recommend. I mean, most will talk about the, in the fallout the fact that Lucia didn't come up to scratch, didn't settle, but she does so much right. She's really genuine, professional. Her jumping was absolutely faultless and I thought that really bold leap at the last sort of categorised what had been just a really faultless performance. I think a few have said something that maybe the second and third were too far back, but they've beaten absolutely everything else under those tactics. It's just they were in, bumped into a staying mare who, who does a lot right. Absolutely. So those were some of the highlights here on day three at Cheltenham. As I say, we're looking forward to more of the same here this afternoon and we'll be building right the way through the morning to our seven race programme. We'll be doing so in the company of Niall Hannity and Megan Nichols. Let's say a very good morning to them. Hi Gary, yeah, good morning to you, good morning to everyone and welcome down to the, the final fence at 3.40 today. What's going to land over here in front or more importantly what's going to land uh, to that winning post in front. You hope Brave Man's game. We saw them clips at the, the top of the programme where, where Denman, where Cotto Star, the amazing commentaries that go with it. Amazing memories for us, but for I can't you. Can't even see now, honestly. Sorry, oh, the sun is so, so bright. But that's no bad thing. We like it when it's nice weather. Yeah, look, those memories are unbelievable. Um, like you say, it's been special for everyone, but extra special for for yeah. the family. And um, yeah, pretty amazing uh, sort of clips to to watch back. Quarto Denman, incredible horses. Yeah. The fresh ground here, you'll, you'll, you'll see today, the strip of fresh ground, where you'll see where the horses were landing over yesterday. So the inside, as ever, on, on Gold Cup, today, this strip of ground will be, at a, will it be a bit at a premium. Yeah, absolutely. This is where plenty of the jocks are going to be wanting to come. They'll have walked the track and seen how kind of rough it is in the middle of the fence. Like you say, from yesterday, that is the, the sort of main part of the landing side where they, they were sort of cutting up, if you like. Mm. This fresh strip is going to be uh, popular, but... It's only, what, two horse whips, really? Not everyone yeah. can get on it, so there'll be a good hustle and bustle at the start to get a good position. Um, Brave Man's game, thoughts? Oh, look, he's uh, done the sort of quarter star route, hasn't he? Weatherby, Kempton, and, and now on to the Gold Cup. Uh, he's been impressive so far. Galapanda Champs looks like an absolute monster, so he's the one to beat, but we're really hopeful that Brave can run a good race. Your dad being your dad will be really bullish because this this not beat around the bush. The first two days were pretty awful, weren't they? And then Stage Star was good. They all ran really well yesterday. Yeah, they all ran really well. And we had a couple on the first day run into a nice place, but not quite good enough. And then a couple that, like you say, were really disappointing. So the fact that Stage Star won for us yesterday was amazing. That's lifted the mood. And uh, yeah, he's confident as ever. And um, look, I think he'll be delighted to see that the sun is out and, and it's not raining yet. So fingers crossed yeah, that not, stays away. Yeah, it's not going to be a fog. No. It's going to be an easy ground, soft, good to soften places officially. We'll hear from John Pullen uh, in due course, but it's, it's not a bog. No, and that's, I think, everyone's going to be delighted about that. It's, it's pretty fair ground. Um, Dad especially, you know, Brave Man's game. There's been all the chat about him not wanting it really testing. Harry Cobden's glad it's on the softer side. He actually thinks that suits, but we wouldn't want it to be heavy. And, um, yeah, it's, a, it's going to be... All fair in love and war today, I think. Yeah, it will be. It will be. It, it promised to be like Gallop and Champ for 
uh, well, the favourite of all winter, and rightly so, for Willie Mullins and, and Paul Tart. And Henry de Bromhead, which is fantastic. We won the Grand Annual, Honeysuckle won the Mares, and obviously uh, yesterday taken the, the Ryanair chase as well. So he's had a really good week in the back of that. Manila Endu and the Blue Tart of have really contracted the price. Yeah, Manila, uh, Manila, mm, Manila Indo obviously hasn't had uh, as such a complicated preparation as a Plutard, I suppose. A Plutard on the course this morning, first thing, I promise you looked a million dollars. He yeah. really looked well. Um, we obviously have seen Henry have a pretty good week. It's going to be hard coming off the back of, like I say, a really awful and awkward preparation. Yeah. Um, but he'll be in as best form Henry could possibly get him in for today and um, they'll be hoping to sort of finish the week off mm. as well as they started it. But we saw yesterday in the, in the stairs hurdle Saturday Friday, that course form is, is massive and Minello has got that, he's proven stamina, he's proven excellent course form and with the yard really kicking into gear I wouldn't be surprised to see him run well. Yeah, both Henry's horses mm. certainly have chances. Um, last year, Plutard kind of got the race to suit him. They didn't go overly quick. He managed to use his speed. This year, I think there's a bit more pace in the race. Therefore, maybe it will be more of a stamina test. Um, there's quite a strong headwind slightly to the side. Um, so that's going to obviously put emphasis on stamina as well if the, if the wind does stay up. So, yeah, look at Manila Indo. Like you say, Cheltenham form can be key and um, stamina is going to have to be mm. key in this uh, Gold Cup today, I think. Mm. It's fascinating. 13 of them are going to post. We're looking forward to bringing you the, the build-up here on Market Card over the next uh, couple of hours. The last member of the team, last but certainly not least, back at base camp, let's say a very good morning to Jess Stafford. Hi, Jess. Hello everyone, yes, thank you to Noel and to Megan and welcome to the studio here. It is Gold Cup Day, the very much the pinnacle of our sport and after the last three days of mouth-watering action and all the drama and fairy tale stories, we hope to end this Cheltenham Festival week on another high. We of course have the Boodles Gold Cup, but that's not just it, we've got the six supporting races as well and on St. Patrick's Day, will the Irish clean up. This, of course, was the day that last year Willie Mullins had five winners. Will he have another clean sweep of the card uh, this time around? Well, he definitely has some very, very live chances indeed. We will begin, of course, with the triumph hurdle, and that's where we will begin to see some of the Willie Mullins camp and, well, Lossy Mouth, she's been pretty spectacular up until her last run where a luckless trip round saw her denied at the Dublin Racing Festival. She is the pick of Paul Townend, who will be riding her in the colours of Rich Ritchie. And this great filly has long been the antipose favourite for this race, but she is a tough opponent in her stablemate Blood Destiny, fairly unexposed at this level but has been visually massively impressive. And Willie Mullins' son, Patrick Mullins, will be on board. So as it stands, it's a Willie Mullins dominating the betting as he has been in this kind of race. Can he take it with one of these two? And could he continue the day on a roll with Hunter's Yarn? As we look ahead to one of the feature handicaps of the week, this is the county hurdle and Hunter's Yarn has to defy a pretty high mark of 147 but he's been very well supported as we see him here another very impressive horse as has been Corbett's Cross who for Emmett Mullins will look to run a big race here this afternoon in the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle always a bit of a stamina test for these novices Corbett's Cross now will be supporting the colours of J.P. McManus. He's had a pretty good week and Corbett's Cross has been the name on everyone's lips for this race as we build up to the Albert Bartlett. And then we head to the feature, the blue ribband of our sport, the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup chase. And Gallopin Deschamps, can he get to new heights and deliver after winning the Irish Gold Cup in such fine style. He has to find a few extra furlongs this afternoon for Paul Townend, but he's long been everyone's answer for the winner. But it's been a race that we've been looking forward to over this season, and it's nothing short and spectacular in terms of the lineup. Last year's winner, Aplutard, looking to go back to back with Rachel Blackmore on board for the Henry de Bromhead team, who've had a fabulous 
few days. A Plutard hasn't been seen since that very disappointing run in the Betfair chase. Can he win this race again or will it be back for the English and for Paul Nichols, brave man's game, who was so brilliant when winning the King George on Boxing Day. He will have to raise his game again, but this horse who his connections have been so positive about comes into it with a perfect trip in. And Noble Yates, well, the Gold Cup is a pretty special race anyway, but having a grand national winner in this lineup just adds that little bit of something special. And Noble Yates will have his customary cheap pieces back on board. He showed himself what kind of horse he can be in this grade of race when winning at Aintree early on in the season. And he definitely has the stamina, which you'll need with the ground being a little bit more testing than some of the lead protagonists might have wanted. So Noble Yates to add to that glittering array of horses. And then, as always, we go on to the Hunter's Chase and Bill Away, who has two seconds in this, in this race to his name. He came from the clouds to, de to deny wing leader in the race last year and he'll be back to defend his crown to make it what the Willie Mullins team will hope be a very special day indeed. And if they can add Bill Away, Galloping de Champs, Lossy Mouth and Hunter's Yarn to their list, they'll be hoping Allegory de Vassi will keep their very exciting day up. This mare has been pretty flawless over fences this season. She's a big, fine stayer and she looks to have the world at her feet in the Paddy Power Mare's Chase. And then, can they close the day on a high, the Willie Mullins Yard? They will have Spanish Harlem, who cost a pretty penny in the sales ring. He lines up in the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap Hurdle. And Spanish Harlem, who will have Michael O'Sullivan on board, who's been a real star of the ranks this season. He's had two winners already. Can he end on a high on Spanish Harlem? Those are some of the names we've got to look forward to this afternoon. And today, this is the list of races. As always, we will look forward to starting off with the JCB Triumph Hurdle, just run over the two miles. And then we go into the 210, the McCoy Contractors County Handicap Hurdle over the same trip. Then at 2.50, just shy of three miles, is the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle, the second of the grade ones. And then it's the feature, the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup chase over three miles, two furlongs at 3.30. At 4.10, the St. James's Place Festival Challenge Cup Open Hunters Chase run over the three mile, two furlong trip. At 4.50, the Mrs. Paddy Power Mares chase the grade two. And then they close out the day, the final race of the Cheltenham Festival. As always, the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockeys Handicap Hurdle at 5.30 with the ground soft, good to soft in places. And we do have some non-runners for you to let you know of today. So take out in the 4.10, not that few see. And then in the 5.30, in the County Hurdle, excuse me, in the Martin Pipe, take out number 16, Wonderwall, number 21, Grozny, 23, Hey Johnny, 25, In and Tondu, and 26, Voltan. So that is what we have to look forward to in terms of the list of races, some of the star horses that we look to see. The drama, well, it has been nothing short of it over the last three days. Let's see how it might continue, but we'll head back to Nile now with more updates from the track. Okay, day four, the feature, the, the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup at 3.30 this afternoon. Let's get a, a going report with, with John Pullen. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. Um, you know, we raced through the rain yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty much like drizzle all day, so nothing too significant. We only ended up with two and a half millimetres through the afternoon and into the evening yesterday. Been dry for much of the night. Um, outlook for today, um, it's a little bit tricky. We could end up dry um, throughout the day with a few sunny spells, or there are some sporadic showers around. And, and if we do catch one, they might be you know, quite short and sharp mm -hmm. and, and get a mill or two from, from each shower. But uh, hopefully we'll, uh, 
you know, not see too many. We saw yesterday you've got that strip of ground of what you have traditionally every year. So the inside will be that that ground will be at a, at a premium, won't it? It will, yeah. So we've opened up the chase course. Um, so there's a good three or four yards around the inside there for, for the Gold Cup. And uh, we've actually moved some of the hurdle rail as well. We've right. pushed that out a couple of yards uh, on uh, sort of three or four areas just to try and get them off the ground that they raced on yesterday, just to give them a bit of fresh on the hurdle course as well. So um, we're in good shape for today and we remain soft and good to soft in places. And once again, the softer bits just by, by up the hill? Yeah, that's it. Back straight primarily is the good to soft and right. up, up at the top of the hill, but um, you know, certainly the, the, the home straight would be the more testing mm. grind. What wins the Cheltenham Gold Cup? <laughs> good question. I think it's a great race. Uh, I think it's pretty open. Uh, obviously, the, the, you know, the favourite's there with a, with a favourite's chance, but um, I think it's an open race, and hopefully we'll have three or four upsides at the last. So far, the first three days, if, if for us, what, watch it on, it, it seems like it's gone well out there. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been, been a great three days, days so far, and hopefully you know, today we'll continue in that vein. It, we've seen great racing and great stories throughout, so uh, hopefully much of the same today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for your help all week, and have a good day. Thank you. Yeah, really helpful insight to the conditions of the ground and it looks like it will be dry, which will make things interesting as uh, more rain would have meant more emphasis on stamina for the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. But we will have the ground as it is. We'll make it uh, a very fair and square kind of test of stamina for our lead pretenders with Gallopin Deschamps, who still heads the betting market and... We will have a look at what his lineup of runners are that he has to fend, up, fend off as we'll take you through the contenders for the Boodles Cheltenham Gold Cup. For the second year in succession, Les Gardo is the winner of the 1971 Gold Cup. They rate up towards the line. Nick Arkell striding away well clear. Abutard is cutting Manella Indo back and Abutard is storming up the hill. Six, seven lengths clear in the hands of Rachel Blackmore. Abutard, a runaway winner. It's Galapin Deschamps who's leaving a trail of destruction here. And it's Galapin Deschamps taking it to another level in the Paddy Pan Irish Gold Cup. Brave man's game under Harry Cobden, uh, drawing away by four lengths, and it's Brave man's game to win the Tarly Hall. And it is Brave man's game to give Paul Nichols a record, 13th win in the King George. It's Noble Yates on the South Wendy Tully, a fairy tale end for his career. Noble Yates has won the national. It is Stanford now. What a race we have in store. And last year's winner, Aplutar. The confidence might just have risen a little bit after Rachel Blackmore and Henry de Bromel have had such an excellent week. And Boyolan yesterday boosting the chances of Aplutard, last year's winner. He has that P to his name for that disappointing run in the Betfair chase. But he was so electric in winning it last year. And can he come back and spoil the brave man's game? party well it is looking like this from a betting perspective Gallopin de Champ currently the six to four market leader but the money has come for Aplutard as I've mentioned four to one Gallopin de Champ is six to four Brave Man's Game the King George winner six to one Noble Yates the Grand National Hero eleven to one Ahoy Senor fourteen to one along with Statler the winner of last year's National Hunt Chase we've got Conflated at sixteen to one along with Manella Indo the winner of this race a couple of years ago Protect Rap ran a fine race to be third in the race last year. He is 18 to 1, 33 to 1 
for the I for the American Grand National winner Hueck Sounds Russian is 33 to 1. Royal Pagai 40 to 1 and making up the field El Dorado Allen at 80 to 1. What a wonderful list of horses that will line up in this Cheltenham Gold Cup. But it's all been about Galopin Duchamp all season. He's a winner at the Cheltenham Festival in the past. He just knuckled on landing and was denied a success in the race last year. But he's been pretty much flawless bar that. And just a seven-year-old, he's got years on his side and an official rating of 173. Have we seen the best of him yet? Well, let's go back and find out what the team on the ground make of Galopin de Champ and his challenges. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. We're going to have a look at Gallop and Deschamps win in the Irish Gold Cup last time and canvas opinion with the guys here. Jonathan, how persuasive do you feel his claims are? We obviously see Statler finishing at a respectable distance behind him here on this occasion. I think they're pretty persuasive, Gary. Uh, we know that Statler is a thorough stayer and you might think, well, an extra two and a half furlongs today might enable him to narrow the gap, but he jumps the last fence at Leopard's Down four lengths behind the winner yeah. and at the line he's eight lengths behind and you know, I'd, I'd rather take the line that the trainer does that you can't understand why people think he might not stay because he won a three mile novice hurdle or three mile hurdle and that probably takes more stamina than winning a three mile chase and I don't I don't really see any reason why he won't won't get the trip and that that I found pretty persuasive and as we saw here last year, Dan, he was a pretty exuberant sort as a novice chaser. The Mullins camp have been working hard to try and keep the lid on him a bit mm. more. Is it paying dividends on what you've seen? It seems to be. Last year, I'm not saying he had just one way of going, but the preferred way was certainly, and it probably preference from his point of view rather than the connections, was that you just press on with him, use that ball, jump in. That would have been a concern start the season for a Gold Cup. I think it is less so now because of the fact that he's shown he's more amenable they've been able to ride him differently and he did hit the line strong I mean one thing you'd know we've seen this earlier in the week we saw Mighty Potter's form lines in the novice ranks maybe up against say appreciate it. it's looking like they might have taken a knock or two I wouldn't say his form has necessarily been enhanced this week that applies to Statler too, of course, because it comes from the same race. Thinking what Fiori Road did, for instance, Franco de Port's Cheltenham target was a, a cross-country chase. But, yeah, he's he's been faultless by that one freak instant last season. You'd be encouraged by his strength at the finish last time, and I'm pretty sure he's the horse with the most potential in the race. He is, of course, trained by Willie Mullins. Let's hear from the Irish champion trainer now. He's been speaking to Don McLean. Galloping the Charm, you must have been really happy with him the last day of Leopard Sanry. I'm, I'm, uh, I was very happy the last. I was very happy in the John Durkin. Uh, he's relaxing during his races. He's, you know, I know he's a good. He, he has a vibrant way of racing, or he did last year, and um, now he's relaxing more, which will help him stay out the trip. Uh, he won a three mile hurdle as a novice, and to me that puts to bed all our worries about him staying the Gold Cup trip and um, I think he's relaxing more for Paul as well during his race and now Paul is much happier with that that he's able to put him to sleep, keep him there and he'll probably you know, ride him a bit like album photo you know, get his position early on, put him to sleep and wind him up into the race and hopefully he'll jump a little better than he jumped well he jumped the last fantastic last year but just picked on landing, whatever happened I don't know I'm not sure I want to go back and look at it again but um, <laughs> and, uh, he these things happen. Yeah. Uh, so, because he'd be he'd be unbeaten over fences, but for that. So, well, there we are. You know. Yeah. And th they didn't go a great pace in the Leopard Sand race. They think maybe like, and but it was towards the end that he. That's when he he was most impressive. Yeah, they didn't, the and that's probably why he didn't look visually impressive. That the horses weren't falling away. There's a lot of horses still there at the business end. But Paul thought when he eventually got him wound up that he was, you know, he he, he was never worried that he wasn't going to catch the ones in front. And then when he got to the front and got through the winner post, he couldn't pull him up. Mm. You know, he went off, I think, down to uh, pass the two fences uh, after the stand, down to the reservoir there. So, um, you know, that's a great sign in a horse as yeah. well. And Statler, of course, he goes for the Gold Cup as well, the National Hunt Chase winner from last season. Yeah, he had a great prep in Tremor. 
uh, chasing home Manila Indo, and then he had a good run the other day in the in the Gold Cup. Uh, Patrick was very happy the way he stayed on, and I think Patrick is keen to ride him in the Gold Cup. And Ronnie Bartlett, his owner, is happy to do that as well. Yeah, a winning combination, the two of them. Yes, yeah. Right. And of course, the fast, faster pace, hopefully in the Gold Cup, plus the extra trip that helped him. Do you think? Yeah, I think he love all that, you know. So we've two nice bullets to fire at it this year. So we've looked at the favourite gallop in days, Sean. Let's go back to the 2022 edition of the Cheltenham Gold Cup and once again relive the brilliant win of a blue tyre. And a lot of people, I'm sure, came away from this day last year thinking that this horse, Jonathan, could come back and win it again, and maybe even who knows, go on to win a third, but. It's been a fairly bumpy ride since then. Can we have any confidence in him producing a performance like this? Well, of course, history is littered with horses who look really good winning it and then they never never reproduce it. Uh, you've got to be very fortunate and very skillfully trained like that Boom Photo to come up with more than one. I, you know, this was tremendous, wasn't it? They were all in a group. Suddenly he's left everything for dead. All the others are going up the hill from the final fence like elderly commuters rushing to get the 5.30 to Virginia Water. And I mean, there are all sorts of people who have told me how, how well one or two of these were staying on. No, they weren't. They were absolutely legless. Uh, but the problems since have obviously been well documented. Dan, what's your feeling? Have events of the last few days strengthened his claims? The bookmakers seem to think so, or perhaps they're just expecting a bit more support from him. I think naturally, if, if Henry had drawn a blank this week, I think he would be naturally less inclined to think, oh, he might bounce back. He's had 18 runners here this week, Henry. Three of them have won, four more have hit the frame. So it's been a really productive week, and he's worked his magic with Envoyle and getting him to peak for the Ryanair yesterday and getting Honeysuckle back as well. So... The right two, if you like, are the two that have bounced back this week ahead of a potential bounce back to a Plutard. I have no doubt that, that is the best individual piece of form in the race. Yes, Manella Indo was absolutely walking, as Jonathan said after the last, but he, the camera could barely keep up with him. The acceleration he was showing to go away, it was a remarkable performance. Complete blow at Haydock, haven't seen him since. You're taking a lot on trust, and maybe you've missed the prices now, but what price would he be if you could guarantee he could run to that last year's level? That's, a, that's the question. Yeah, an awful lot shorter, that's for sure. What about Brave Man's game then? Paul Nichols on the score sheet yesterday with stage star. Brave Man's game, not seen since his win in the King George at Kempton. Dan, just talk us through this. I mean, how highly do you rate the form, and how does it... I suppose translate Kempton form here to Cheltenham and the extra distance. Yeah, we've we've had a few, haven't we, down the years that haven't managed to translate it. Paul Strain, one of them, particularly in Sylvian Agron, two actually, Clanders Oboe, another one man was a classic from a few years before that who could see things out perfectly well over Kempton three miles in a King George, but the trip in the Gold Cup, extra two and everyone says two and a half furlongs and but 2.3 furlongs to be exact with an extra 70 yards um, has found them out in terms of stamina particularly on ground that once the rain had got in yesterday which started before the stayers I'm pretty sure was soft for the last three races um, I do think it's a different examination of him and yeah I have reservations over the form yes he maybe wasn't seen to best effect he was taken wide throughout but long press did a lot in front if anything, it felt like a bit of a pace collapse rate. I thought it fell apart to some extent. I think he's still got it to prove. Where does he sit for you, Jonathan? I tend to think that he is a Kempton horse. And uh, I'd be quite surprised if he came up the hill as strong as as strongly as two or three of his rivals this afternoon. OK, I don't think I disagree. Let's hear from Paul Nichols then. He's been chatting to Tom, Bill, Tom Bull about Braveman's game. Brave man's game, yeah. you're looking for another gold cup. In terms of your previous gold cup winners, how do you think he, he matches up to those? Well, two of the three were King George winners, Seymour Business and Corto, so that's a good time to start with. King George winners do go on and win gold cups. Um, yeah, he's a very smart horse, he's been progressive this year, probably he's as mature now as he's ever been, and he's in a really good place. And we've, yeah, it's like any. Rome wasn't built on a day, and it takes a while to learn how, how to get the very best of them, and I think we're getting there with him. And, I think he needs to be very fresh and very fit. That suits him nicely, so yeah, happy with him. And I know over the last couple of weeks you've said that he's really strengthened mm. up into his frame. This year, 
Do you know it's going to stand him in good stead tackling that three mile two and a half trip for the first time? Yeah, no, it's just he got the, he's just never been further than that for, for the reason that you don't really get in that gold cup. And it was the same with Cordo before the first time. You know, you won a King George, he'd never been three and a quarter miles till he got to Cheltenham. You need a horse that can travel and jump around there. That's, that's something he can do. It's unknown territory, isn't it? That, that, that last little bit for all of them, really. Um, but I'm confident he, 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 he will be fine. He's looked every bit of stay up of late, you know. He's one of the finest jumpers of the fence mm. I've seen for a long time as well, which must be a very helpful thing as well. Well, I think that helps around there. If you can jump and travel, you can save plenty of energy for later in the race. That is a big plus. Paul Nichols there speaking about Brave Man's game. Time to check out some course form now. We're going to go back to the Cotswold Chase here at Cheltenham at the end of January, a race that was won by a hoist in your and obviously also contained Sounds Russian, Noble Yates and Protectorate. They were obviously main players this day, Jonathan. Are they going to be bit part players today, though? Well, all four of them could come away from this with a certain amount of hope and satisfaction. A hoist in your, despite doing a lot wrong, managed to win. Sounds Russian, despite a blunder at the top of the hill, went through the race like the best horse at the weights uh, Noble Yates obviously has the cheek pieces back on which we all expected and was staying on dually and Dan Skelton has been pretty clear that he thinks he undercooked protector at unlike at Haydock when he had him right so they'll all be hopeful uh, frankly it's just not good enough form mm. not in the context of this I mean I'd be partially tempted by Sam's Russian who's the biggest price of the four He's not a very strong finisher at the end of his races, uh, but if he gets into a nice sweet rhythm, he could make the throw. But I wouldn't put it any stronger than that. Dan, of the four, who do you think is the most likely maybe to be involved at the finish today, if any? Well, the cheek piece is quite the angle with Noble Yates, isn't it? I mean, it would be a remarkable story. He'd be the first ever to win a Gold Cup after his first Grand National. I mean, sort of defying the rule book isn't he to a large extent Emmett Mullins with his campaign of horses but I agree with Jonathan Zaxton the biggest price of them is the horse who's shaped like the best horse in the race on the day he, he went clear without much fuss really if anything given the ride again Sean Quinlan might have held on to him a bit longer but he let him go he made that bad mistake that Jonathan says where he reached for one he still didn't really lie down once he was collared, so I don't think stamina's really a concern with him, a more reserved ride. He would be the, the one of the quartet. The closer we get to race time, it will be him, just because of price. One more visual clue for you, and we're going to have a look now at the Savile Chase at Leopardstown on December the 28th. This was won by Conflated, who had also won the Irish Gold Cup earlier that year. He's been kept on ice since this success. He ran in the Ryanair, of course, last year instead of the Gold Cup. My feeling, for what it's worth, Jonathan, is that this horse is maybe being underestimated a bit. He has this reputation as being a difficult sort from his younger days, but I think he's done his best to shed that over the last 18 months. What say you? He probably has. And I mean, look, it's not a vintage renewal of the race, was it? But he's absolutely stamped his authority all over them. You, and one thing you definitely know is that, although last year they opted for the, for the Ryanair, that he, he will absolutely stay the trim. And yeah, he's just another one you can throw into the mix. The, the line is always tell them something they don't know, but uh, it's very difficult to tell people what they don't know because it's, it's there right in front of you. Fair comment. Dan, conflated, do you think he can get involved? Yeah, I'm not so sold on the stammerang. I think his two best performances, the two grade one wins, have been not strongly run three miles flat at Leopardstown. And going back to the point that Jonathan made initially, in terms of bear form, He's beaten Ken Boy a handful of lengths. Ken Boy hadn't won for over two years prior to ending that blank only the other day when the weights very much favoured him. So I think in form he's got a bit in terms of form he's got a bit to find and he's gone from potential Ryanair contender twelve months ago to now taking it as read that he's going to stay the Gold Cup trip and I'm not that sold mm. I was kind of using the bold effort at Aintree against Clando's Oboe as mm. maybe a, a bit of a plus on that front. Will that be Go am, on, am I wrong? No, I think you're entitled because Clando's Oboe is a very good horse at Aintree and uh, he did put up a, you know, a really stout effort against him. OK, decision time, guys. Yep. How do we see it going? Sadly, I think the favourite is the likeliest winner but I hope that basically racing is the winner on the, on the day because it could be a really, really good contest. Mm. All the ingredients are there, I think, Dan. What's your feeling about how it'll play out? Well, we've seen mine in action. We haven't really spoken about him, but I do think Statler fits a bill as a 
you know, a fairly standard Gold Cup type, proven stamina from the National Hunt chase. Gave a, a really good account of himself against Manella Indo, conceding weight to him at a track that wouldn't have suited. And, and I think if it had landed running two, two out at Leopardstown last time, he might have finished a, a more clear cut second. And everybody was really thriving in the aftermath about how strong Galapander Champs was to the line. He only added an extra length from the last to the line over Statler. So I think his effort was slightly under, underrated. They seemingly can't give him away, but I'd be happy to back him each way. Not long to go now until we get the answer. 3.30 this afternoon for the Boodles. Shelton Goldcock. Mark your card. Proudly sponsored by Timefall. Hard. We're suspending you for two days. Hard. 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 Well, soft, but you know. Hard. Hard. Oh. Racing is hard. Betting on it shouldn't be. The UK's number one betting app. Built for ease. Skybet. That's betting better. As a member of Racing TV, you get access to dedicated live race course feeds through Racing TV Extra. All you need to do is log in with your Racing TV username and password. Racing TV Extra puts you in control so you can focus on the races or meetings that matter to you. If watching on a desktop, tablet or Apple TV, you can select from one to four live screens. On mobile phones and Amazon Fire TV, single screen options are available. Never miss a moment of action with Racing TV Extra at RacingTV.com. Mark your car. Proudly sponsored by Timefall. Right now, we will look at the opening race on the final day of the Cheltenham Festival. As customary, it's for the juveniles. It's the triumph hurdle. And we will be looking forward to seeing how these juveniles get on. Well, this is what the betting looks like. 15 runners and Willie Mullins is responsible for seven of these and they dominate the betting as well. Lossy Mouth heads it at 13 to eight. Blood Destiny is nine to four. Gala Marceau is four to one. Then there is Ascending at eight to one. Eight to one as well for Zenta. Gust of Wind is 40s along with Hypertunus, Gypco is 40 to 1, 50 to 1 for Jupiter de Geet, Jagard is 100 to 1, 125 to 1 for Wright, Sotum, Jacover Cavern is 150 to 1, as is Sinsa, Active Duty is 200 to 1, and 200 to 1 also for Al Mu It. So those are the runners and their prices. And as I mentioned, seven of the 15 are trained by Willie Mullins, and he talked about some of his lead contenders with Don McLean. Lossy Mouth, Gallimard Soul, Blood Destiny. I didn't bring Blood Destiny to the festival, Dublin Racing Festival. I just thought, th just thought he'd done plenty, and uh, but but he's he's a big threat in that. He form got another boost the other day. The horse he beat twenty lengths, I think. Yeah, only his first run won in Nace, you know, Sir Alan. Um, you know, so they're nice to be going ahead with any of those three. Well, what did you make of the race the last day at Leopardstown? Because I, there's a chance that Gallimard so maybe didn't get the credit that she should have got for winning the race. Yeah, there is. But, I mean, Lossie Mouth, you'd have to say, looked unlucky. She got into traffic problems. and um, But the other filly is good as well, you know, so... Um, She's very hard on herself, uh, Gallimar, so she pulled very hard, and I believe it's a trait in, their, in the pedigree that a lot of them race, like to race very prominently, and they're very keen during their, uh, during their races, so we'll see, I'll have a word with Danny and see uh, what we can do to improve that in Cheltenham, but then they'll be going much faster Gallop in Cheltenham, so they will. I'd love that she improved from her first run behind Lassima to the last day and there's every chance she'll improve again. I think so, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Was Lassima, was she okay? Lassima seems fine. She's, um, it's not ideal to have a, a race like that 
and you know being just a four-year-old filly you wonder how much it'll take out of her but she she's very laid back so she probably hopefully she won't think too much about it certainly does look as though Willie Mullins holds the key to this year's JCB Triumph Fertile, but will it be Lossiness? Will it be Shalomar so? statement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Neck on the block. Got the door as well on the house. I thought it'd have to. Although the Henry de Bromhead horse, I mean, we'll come to that in a minute. Eight to one. We're, we're trying to get our heads around that price for ascending. But anyway, let's have a look at Lossiness winning at Leopardstown at the Christmas Festival there, where she beat Gallimard so. It all went swimmingly for Lossiness this day. We'll come along to the Dublin Racing Festival in a second, Jonathan, but did you like what you saw here? Yes, and why wouldn't you? Uh, I mean, she looked very good. She looked, looked like what she is, a top-class juvenile filly. And Gala Marceau was a little further back on that occasion, although making strides into second, couldn't lay a glove on the winner. So you, you'd imagine, looking at that, that there's every reason to expect Lossie Mouth to beat Gala Marceau on that evidence. Gala Marceau. Course, there is some more to look at. There certainly is. We're going to come on to that now. Gala Marceau was having her first run for Willie Mullins there. Lossie Meth had won at Fairy House previously. Dan, now we're going to have a look at the much talked about Spring Juvenile Earl at the Dublin Racing Festival. Obviously, the big story of the race was the interference Lossie Meth suffered. And, but it didn't get any easier for her after that. She had to cover a lot of ground out wide. What's your feeling about how things are going to shape up in the rematch? Well, if you're going to if you're going to toss a coin as to which race we've just seen is the more accurate guide to their ability and merit, then it's the first of them, because very little went right. As much as you mentioned, of course, the hampering by the, the same owner's horse dropping back into Paul's lap, it was the fact that he then probably burst lost him out by having to brush around the outside. Even at this point, she looks like she might be able to narrow the gap, and even threatened, I think, approaching the last until such a big move takes its toll. Winner's a very uncomplicated filly. She's settled a bit better. She can still be a bit free. Um, I think the form will be reversed, all things being equal. We saw I think the, so, much, so much went wrong. We saw the stripe jacket of ascending there, dropping back 18 lengths off the winner into fourth. Can you fathom this market move for ascending? Can it be anything other than stable form that's prompted? No, because it's not like we're dealing with a horse that was, say, 100 plus on the flat or a blood destiny who came with a massive reputation from France. Middle of the road, maybe slightly higher than middle of the road form on the flat and firmly puts in his place there. I, no, it's a puzzling market move to me. Let's have a look then at Blood Destiny, who's been a big talking horse for this. Winner of a maiden hurdle at Cork and then he followed up in a graded race at Ferriers last time. Now, this was very uncompetitive, Jonathan. I think quite a few of them were shall we say <laughs> connections where maybe had their eyes on other targets further <laughs> down the line would that be fair he certainly certainly got a pretty easy time of it didn't he nevertheless you know, it, in theory the form stacks up alongside lossy mouth because they both had the same same horse and us went back in third you know beaten about the same distance horse again came over here and won at kempton and yeah and, He's not going to have an easy time of it to this afternoon as he's had there, but strictly on form, he's got every chance. What's your feeling about him, Dan? I think he's the best prospect mm. in the race. I think he's, he's the one with more long-term scope. He's, he's from a flat pond in the dam side, which is by a jump sire in no risk at all. He, and he's been very impressive, imposing horse, lots of ability, big engine. Maybe the one thing he lacked is experience. Um, uh, in, a, in a competitive race as much as anything but I think if we're winding the clock forward a year and who's a potential champion hurdler or of that ilk I think it would be him as he's Just when you might have thought Willie Mullins was running out of triumph hurdle contenders he went and produced another one when Zenta won at Ferry House last month beating another of today's rivals Hypotenuse we'll have a look back at this now feature of the closing stages here John. great some, jumping some really <laughs> shoddy hurdling from the winner it, it wasn't great was it spoke two out and the last she's uh, all over the place it doesn't stop the beating hypotenuse and uh, I mean the best rule in the world it's even if she jumps properly it doesn't look in the same league the form I don't think anyway as the, the other bits of footage that we've seen Hypotenuse looked a little bit tricky, I thought, that day as well, Dan. <laughs> One thing I would say, though, to, to overcome those mistakes speaks of a filly with plenty of resolution and a strong stayer at the trip. 
and High Potter News was a £200,000 purchase, had plenty of experience in France, run, running to a pretty good level, and Zent has been able to take care of that rival despite taking the last two with her. I think she's open to a lot of improvement. I think she's potentially a bit overpriced, and she does represent a different form line, and what if it turns out that the Lossy Mouth Gallimarso lines aren't actually all that? OK, time to sum things up then. Do we... Stick with the proven form of Lossy Mouth, the potential of Blood Destiny, or maybe something else? Yeah, I'll probably be watching from behind the sofa, but I'm, I'm with Zenta, I think she's overpriced, and she's got quite a lot of potential. Did not see that coming, Jonathan. Ah, I think Gallimard so improved considerably last time. Yes, Lossy Mouth was unfortunate, but I think the winner still had taken a major step forward. I expect another one with the hood on for the first time. And uh, I think she's the value. OK, Blood Destiny for me. Interesting race. Willie Mullins looks to have all the aces now in that. JCB Triumph Hurdle. Well, yesterday there was so much drama. All the favourites were overturned. It was certainly a day for the bookmakers. And we can look back now at how the action unfolded. <laughs> And the poor little and stay star have won the turner. And the time Johnny has taken it up for Liam McKenna. They see that the water line. It is good time Johnny who takes them a tenth. Well, five out of the seven winners yesterday were Irish, and that is uh, added to their tally as we head into the final day of the Cheltenham Festival Island on 15 winners and Great Britain on the six. How will the final day shape the end of the results for the Presbury Cup Island looking very strong on St. Patrick's Day? And that is also reflected in the trainers and the jockeys championships as well and Ireland as I said 15 to Great Britain 6 and this is how the leading trainers look Willie Mullins four winners five seconds seven thirds and it's pretty close between him and Gordon Elliott who stands on three winners four seconds and five thirds Henry de Bromed has had a marvelous week he's had three winners two seconds and then there's one apiece for the rest of them. Nicky Henderson, Paul Nichols, Barry Connell, Lucinda Russell, Patrick Neville, Dan Skelton, John Kiley, Tom Martin, John McConnell, Jamie Snowden and Sam Curling, all with one winner. But it's tough, tough at the top and it's very, very tight. Can Willie Mullins edge it and get a little bit further? He did get five winners on this day this time last year. And the jockeys standing after day three, well, it looks like this. Paul Townend on three winners and two seconds. He, of course, has Lossy Mouth and he has Gallopin Deschamps. Just two of an electric lineup of rides this afternoon. Rachel Blackmore, she had another wonderful afternoon yesterday. She's on Apu Tard again. Can that add to the two wins that she's got? She's also got one second. And then two winners for the rising talent in the jockeys' ranks. That's Michael O'Sullivan. He's got two wins. Winners and he has a big race ride coming up in the last race on Spanish Harlem. So that's it. That's the standings on after day three and heading into day four, the final day 
of the Cheltenham Festival. Yesterday we saw a bit of drama. As I mentioned, it was a day for the bookies. We had a big shock winner of the Stayers Hurdle inside the Burley. But it wasn't just about that that caused a bit of controversy. A huge run in behind Side de Burley came from Dashiell Drasher, who was leading for a long, long way out. And the Jeremy Scott charge was jumping the last hurdle, is pricked. And he looked to have the race at his mercy. But Saad de Berle was able to sweep past him. But it was at this point that you could see Dashiell Drasher just as leaning over to his right. And it was enough for the stewards to change the placings. And Dashiell Drasher, who came past the post in second, was demoted to third. Tiopo just behind him, as you can see, in the Rob Core colours, the black sleeves, was impeded by his drifting over to the right. And Tiopo was given the second place in the stewards' room. You can see them jumping the final hurdle. Dashiell Dasher out in front. Sarda Berle out of the way of the issues. But it was at this point here, Tiopo comes round Dashiell Drasher. Dashiell Drasher just drifts over to his right. And this was enough for Tiopu, according to the stewards, to be awarded the second place spot. Whether the Jeremy Scott team might appeal this result, we'll wait and see. But that was the incident from yesterday on day three of the Cheltenham Festival. Well, free to air of Mark Your Card is about to end at 11 a.m. this morning. But if you want to subscribe to Racing TV for the rest of today's action, please visit our web website at racingtv.com. And for now, it's time to look at one of the other feature grade one races of the afternoon. It is the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. So this is what the betting looks like ahead of this three-mile Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Corbett's Cross, the 11-4 to favourite, has been pretty impressive. Now with Emmett Mullins, can he add to his successes as a trainer? Hidden Valley Lake is 9-2. to Three Car Bragg, 5-1. to Favorite de Champdu is 17-2. to Then Embassy Gardens, who'd long been uh, a shorter price than this. He's just drifted out somewhat 9-1. Seabank Bristro, another runner for the Willie Mullins team, is 12 to 1. We've got Let's Be Clear About It at 14 to 1. 16 to 1 for Dawn Rising. Stay Away Faye is 16 to 1. Monty Star, 20 to 1. 22 to 1 for Sandor Clegange. Shambali Kid is 22 to 1. And Rock My Way, 25 to 1. 28 to 1, bigger the rest. 20 runners. We've had some big price winners of this race in the past. Let's go back to the team on track with Gary to see what their thoughts ahead of the Albert Bartlett Novices Hurdle. Thanks, Jess. Well, this favourite is certainly a very interesting horse, Corbett's Cross. He had a rather unconventional prep for this by winning a great two races over just shy of two miles at Nace last time. We'll have a look back at that in just a second. But, Jonathan, he's far from one-dimensional because he's already got a three-mile win on testing grounds on his CV. So he's got a point-to-point -point background as well. Is there anything not to like about him? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, the fact that he's managed to win a Fairy House handicap over the trip off a mark of 130... I mean, because you have a pretty strong base for starting off, comparing him to everything else. Uh, he does appear to have improved considerably. I think there must be some reservations about him having run over shy of two miles quite recently, but if everything's all right after that, I think he's the right favourite. Mm. First one in new colours today as well, Dan. J.P. McManus has snapped him up. Is this a horse that you think can really go on and make a name for himself, irrespective of what happens today? It seems to be the proximity of today to the next race that maybe worries one or two people. Yeah, there was a bit of, it seemed like there was a bit of to and fro in as to what the plan might be and whether they would come here. I think for him to do what he did does speak of a, a horse who's out of the ordinary, as you say, Gary. I mean, winning a three mile handicap, testing ground, off a mark of 130, in decisive style, yet having the gears to come back and win over two. It's you count on one hand the amount of times you'd see that certainly this sort of level so he does look a very exciting horse and I'd expect him to prove the best of these trouble is with this Albert Bart we've seen the best horse beaten in quite a few renewals because of the nature of the race horses getting racing a long way out and it's probably the, the festival race I most associate with 
unfathomable shocks, uh, performances that you just didn't see happening. You know, the runner-up that day was a horse called Founder 50, who had won a maiden hurdle at Ferry House in very good style prior to that. He was a maiden hurdle winner in testing grounds at Limerick at their Christmas meeting as well. I mean, conditions aren't going to be any problem for this no, horse, not he could just be very good. I think that's the long and the short of it. He's done something in his prep that not many horses would be capable of doing. And run through the list of potential rivals. How many of those would you say could do what he's done? I'd, I'd struggle. And, yeah, I'm, I'm quite excited about him. And maybe Emmett's missed the target with a couple this week, and we're not used to that. So Scottish came a bit short in the plate. But big day for him today with Filey Bay as well, trying to put the, the Betfair hurdle memory to bed. Gordon Elliott launches a strong challenge here as well. He's got three card Bragg in the race, who's been big fancy for a while. A lot of people thought he had a nice mark that could maybe have been used in the Martin Pipe, Jonathan. But what do you make of the decision to come here instead? Well, I think they they probably think that the horse wants three miles, don't they? Uh, he, he tends to race rather lazily.